Hello and welcome to the April Workright webinar. Uh, this month we're going to focus on one of our newer products, the risk management system. Uh, managing the various aspects of health and safety compliance can be a complicated and fiddly task for any organisation. Uh, with this in mind, we have developed our online system designed to take the burden out of managing safety information to give our business the ability to streamline and simplify risk assessments. With me, I once again have Ryan Church, our Workright Sales Manager, who's been with Postrite for over eight years and is responsible for the growth and development of our Workright division. So Ryan, without further ado, over to you. Thanks very much, Chris. Um, yeah, this, this month we're going to take you through, um, as Chris has said, our, a system we released uh, middle of last year uh, to to manage all your, your risk assessments, collation, document storage, action planning, all of the uh, the fiddly bits that go with uh, making sure risk assessments are up to date, we um, we term it our RMS, so risk management system. And as with all of the uh, the Workright software products, it is web web based and hosted by us at Postrite in our head office down in East Sussex and supported by our in house team. RMS is basically following the five steps to risk assessment, and what you can see on your screen at the moment, this is the the dashboard. Um, for our demonstration system, which we're going to, I'm going to take you through this afternoon. Um, effectively, uh, I'm logged in now as an administrator, so I can see the whole of the system. But there, there are a number of different responsibilities within the tool. But this dashboard here, the the first box here, the overall risk status, is effectively this is showing me the highest risk of any published risk assessment. The organisational risk. Uh, this displays how many assessments occur, contain a particular risk level. The awaiting approval uh, basically displays the status of all assessments within the system, both published and unpublished. And the, the top five high risk areas, this this um, visual here is just demonstrating uh, the five areas with the highest amount of high risk assessments. Um, below that you've got um, sort of a summary of a number of the other features, so assessments awaiting approval, outstanding actions and overdue assessment reviews, but I will come on to all of that shortly. Um, with most systems, or when, when we're sort of discussing our, our learning management tool, I generally go into the, the, the initial end user's experience before demonstrating the administration suite, but it makes sense with this particular tool to take you into, to, to deal with things the other way around, sorry, um, and to take you into the, the settings first of all, just to explain the different roles and responsibilities a particular person can have. Um, we've all of our products, we try and make things as flexible as possible so that you don't have to fit around the product, the product fits around you. And in the example we have here, um, I'm just basically looking at the, in the settings uh, setup. Each person, and I've just typed in their admin user, sorry, administrator user who I'm logged in as at the moment, I can set each individual's responsibilities. So what we're looking at here, um, you can see all of the options are ticked. There are effectively six different responsibilities, five of them are showing there, the sixth being an end user, which is somebody that just has the ability to search any published risk assessments. I'll come on to that right at the end just to show you how that looks. But um, the, the, the roles within the tool and people that will be using the system to, to complete risk assessments, to, to complete actions, to administer how the system is set up and to publish the tool, you'd set the various different roles here. So if I just talk you through what they are, an owner, is somebody that is being made responsible for completing or carrying out an action from a, a published risk assessment. An assessor is simply somebody that is able and capable to complete a risk assessment in the tool. It's worth pointing out at this point, this tool is going to give you the ability to complete a risk assessment. It doesn't train the end user how to carry out risk assessments. So they must be sort of a competent to a degree or experienced to a degree on having complete, how to complete a risk assessment. However, there is an approver status, which we've got here, just skipping past administrator. If you had line managers that you wanted to complete risk assessments, but you as the health and safety uh, consultant, advisor, person responsible, wanted to review those risk assessments before they're published for everybody to see, you'd have the approver status switched on um, so that anybody in the organization can be an assessor and record a risk assessment, but that they wouldn't be seen by the, the rest of the, the organization before approved uh, by a designated person or people. The other role is the administrator is somebody that has responsibility, uh, can amend the settings as we're doing at the moment um, and control the access. And then there's add list items. 
this is a really important feature within a, um, this type of tool because if you've got a number of people carrying out risk assessments and they're carrying out adding new risk assessments all the time, if you restrict the ability for them to add list items such as a risk assessment title, an area, a location, what you're able to do is you're able to sort of uh, limit the, the number of duplications or uh, similar type of risk assessments that could effectively or should effectively be uh, follow a standard format for the title or for the list or for the areas or locations. So that's the, the add list items section there. Still in settings, if I take you through the lists, um, effectively looking a little like this, um, a person could be responsible, as I've said, for adding and removing, sorry, adding different areas, risk assessment titles, hazard titles, and risk titles. So there's the lists. Um, if I take you into action reminders, and this, these two sections here, action reminders and expiry reminders, this is where the system really sort of steps, it takes a big step on from just being a document storage facility. What we're able to do with these features here is as it sort of quite clearly sort of states here, reminder for actions becoming due. So any completed risk assessment, as you know, will have some sort of action. Um, and what this is able to do is to automatically remind the, the owner who has been made responsible for carrying out any actions within a risk assessment. And as you can see here in the settings, I'm able to CC the, the assessor, the person that completed the risk assessment, or even CC the approver if you have the approval status switched on. And that, that number and volume of reminder emails to remind them that actions are becoming due. That's infinite, but as, a, as an example here, we've got 14 days before, seven, five, and one day, very easily editable by uh, the administrator, timings and wording of reminders. Again, there's a series of automations of reminders for overdue assessments. Potentially, you might want to CC in the assess of the approver, um, but I'd suggest that the period of time after which they're overdue might be a shorter period of time, whereas you're giving someone 14 days when they're due, you're chasing them daily when their actions are overdue. Again, all entirely flexible on the, the, the sequencing and the wording of that reminder process. Similar with the assessments themselves, um, we've reminded them to carry out the actions, but equally we need to um, remind people when an, an assessment is due for um, review, let's say. I mean, I, I'm sure a number of you have, have got a um, currently working from spreadsheets of completed risk assessments and maybe you've got a, a diary reminder in, the, in Outlook or whichever diary system you're using to remind you to do or to, to review any completing risk assessments. That's fine if there's just one person looking after it in an organization, but if you've got a number of people carrying out risk assessments, this tool will allow you to automate reminders when they're due and also, as with the actions, remind people when their assessment has expired and is overdue. Similar sort of process, the administrator has control over the scheduling and the timing of those um, reminders. Finally, in the settings, you've got, as I've mentioned two or three times, is the approval process. This is entirely configurable um, by, uh, by, by the customers using the system. If you um, are a, an organization using this for, for one person, then I would suggest that you wouldn't need the approval process active because there would be one person completing the risk assessments and publishing them. But by switching this on, it enables the, the ability for you as the health and safety um, responsible person to publish any completed risk assessments. So the status we've got this switched on at, sorry, the status we are working to here is having the approval process switched on. So, taking you forward a, a little bit, that's, that's the settings um, process, but if I take you into the how to create a risk assessment, um, as I said at the start, this, this system's following the, the, the five, um, steps to, five steps to risk assessment. Um, what we have the option to do here is we're creating a risk assessment. I have the option to create or copy an existing one, in which case this little option here is just list, it will now list for me all of the existing titles within the uh, within the system, so I could effectively pick an existing risk assessment, and what that would then do is, if I create the risk assessment there, it's going to duplicate all of the existing content from the previous risk assessment. So this would be the sort of tool you would use when you were reviewing uh, an existing risk assessment, or you were completing one that was quite similar um, to one that's already in the tool. And, and as you as the system evolves and as you use it over months, years, uh, and, and, and longer, the the field, sorry, the 
the, the pool or library of existing risk assessments is obviously going to grow. But in this example here, we're not going to copy an existing risk assessment. We're going to start a new one. Now, this doesn't have to just be risk assessments for health and safety. There are different categories, as you know, for various risk assessments. You could categorize them by business conduct, financial risk assessments, operational, which obviously health and safety fits into, and then strategic as well. So if you were sort of looking to, to source the budget for more than more than the health and safety budget, um, you could speak to the rest of the organization, maybe um, sort of suggest assessments for different areas could be categorized in this tool. However, I'm going to follow the health and safety process uh, because that's generally our our market and, and hopefully the people that I'm speaking to right now. So I've selected operational and I'm going to complete a premises risk assessment. I'm going to create that. So it's going to summarize the top here, the category that has been created by, and that's me, I'm the ad administrator user, and I'm going to create a title. So I'm going to say test risk assessment for the purposes of this. Um, now the overview, this is basically asking me for a, 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 to elaborate on the specifics. And if I wasn't too sure at any point in this system, the little question mark just gives you a little bit of guidance as to what elements I should be completing on that particular box. So this is like asking me to elaborate on the specifics of what you're actually assessing. So for the purposes of this, I'm going to do a, an overview of the risk assessment. It is a test. You're going to suffer my typing skills now, people, I'm afraid. It's a test assessment for purposes of demo. Whatever detail you need to put in there. Now, the area, um, because I've got responsibility or the responsibility with the list management, I can add to the areas. I can actually type in anything in this box here. However, if I didn't have responsibility for that, I can only select from the existing list of areas that are in there. So if I suggest Beric is the area, and the risk assessment I'm completing, I'm actually completing it today. But if you are uploading a series of existing risk assessments, maybe you've just um, gone ahead and um, started using this tool, and you had a, a, a series or a number of existing risk assessments that you wanted to upload to the tool, you can change the date, obviously, to the date that the risk assessment was completed. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to work on today's date, and I'm going to go for a validity period of six months. And what that automatically does is it puts in my review date at the bottom of the page here. As I was just saying, if you're uploading, sorry, if you're up, up, uploading a, a number of existing risk assessments, you don't have to fill in all of these fields. Um, the ideal option is that you do because then you've got all the information um, tabulated for the next person that's completing or reviewing a risk assessment, but you could simply upload an existing document at this stage and create an action plan off the back of that. But again, purposes of the demonstration, I won't be uploading documents. I'm just going to go to the next step, which is hazards and risks. So I need to identify a hazard. So for this particular hazard, I'm going to identify that maybe there's a step at the entrance. OK, there's my hazard. A little bit more detail, a uh, small step uh, at the entrance to, you get the idea. It's just, I'm putting in the detail of the, the risk, uh, sorry, the hazards here. The existing controls, the step edge has hazard tape. And I'm going to save that. That's my hazard. Pretty simple. You can obviously elaborate in far more detail in your in your risk in your um, own system. But for the purposes of this, you can get an idea of the content. I'm then going to identify any associated risks with that hazard. So, I would suggest that with a step at the entrance, the hazard is a trip hazard. The detail, okay, um, on entry to again the detail of what you're actually completing. The likelihood of the person tripping, I would suggest is possible. Again, I'm not going to be defining the detail um, of the risk assessment. That's for the risk assessor to define, but I'm going to suggest the, the potential risk level is major. Now, working on the 5 by 5 matrix, which is what this system does, that has generated me a risk level of high. I'm going to save that. And if there are multiple risks, I can add an additional risk. If there are multiple hazards, I can add additional hazards. I think you get the idea with that process, so I'm going to take you through to the actions. Now, there's 
currently one of one of one risks have no actions assigned. So I'm going to assign a an action to this. The owner. This is where I was stating at the beginning. You can add all of your owners to the system at the beginning, but it doesn't matter if you don't know who they are because what the system will do is you can begin typing the name of the person within your organization who will be responsible for the action. So you've basically effectively listed those people at the beginning. But if they're not already in this tool or it's an external contact, a contractor or, or whoever, you simply type in their email address. So Chris, I'm going to make you responsible for this one. If I can type your email address correctly. What that will then do is when I publish this risk assessment, it will notify Chris Jones as the owner for this particular action. The further controls I want to, um, uh, it basically needs a mind of the step, a mind of the step sign. That's what we're looking to do for this particular risk. Action detail, source and put up, sign. Again, more detail if necessary. So. The risks. By putting up the sign, I would suggest that we're reducing the the, the sever sorry the uh, likelihood for impossible uh, Yeah, we still get this. Sorry, I thought we lost the sound there for a second. Okay, so it's basically reduced the uh, taking the original risk. Eyes risk is medium. That's in the ideal world, as we know. Um, the sound still there? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I've got some feedback in my ear. Excuse me. The, if you can hear me, I hope I will carry on. Now, because I've got the um, approval status switched on, and I am um, in the system also as an approver, I get a publish button at the bottom of the, of the screen here. If we didn't have the approval status switched on, everybody would have a publish button. But if I was an assessor, and if I was an assessor and not uh, given the approval process, this button here would simply say save. Okay, so I'm going to publish that. So the following risks have no actions against them. Chip has a has a type. I'm going to confirm actions and publish. Okay, now you notice here that the system has allocated a risk, uh, sorry, an ID to the risk assessment. They're obviously unique and they can be searched at any point. Okay, so that's the, the creation of risk assessment. Taking you back to the dashboard, um, I mentioned earlier that further down the page here we've got um, assessments awaiting approval but outstanding actions. Um, we've got here, you can, there's a drop down here, I can then go into more detail see um, anybody that's the action owner and acknowledge. So the, what this is showing me here in this right hand column is, is telling me that when this particular person, so in this example here, D. Morton has not seen that action. So once that person has seen that action, it is deemed as seen. So we've got recognition within the tool that they've acknowledged the fact that they can see uh, that they're responsible for it. Beyond that, um, We've got the, the end user's experience, which is simply the ability to be able to, to search um, existing published risk assessments. And their experience when they see this system, they wouldn't see the dashboard, they would see, be able to create, they wouldn't see the actions or settings, they would simply be able to search risk, uh, existing risk assessments and type in some sort of search feature. You can search on the title, the area, uh, the date range, all sorts of options there. I can search that and it shows me all of the risk assessments that follow the same sort of title there. Okay, now that effectively is sort of taking you through how you're recording a risk assessment, you're able to manage your actions, how you can see from your um, your dashboard what is actually important um, and hopefully um, I've demonstrated clearly how this system is more than just a document store and can help improve a number of existing processes. Chris, I'm hoping the, the, the volume and the sound has, has, has all been okay. Have we had any questions? Uh, Ron, I think, we, I think we got away with that one. I think the, um, the sound was very temporary and hopefully it didn't uh, cause too much problem for our listeners. Um, we have had a couple of questions actually. Um, 
one question which I believe you may have answered while you were going through, but I think it's important anyway, which is what can I do if I've already got risk assessments that I've completed in the past? Okay, um, yeah, there's a, there's a few options. I, I wouldn't expect anybody that was going to use this tool to, to not have any existing risk assessments, um, otherwise you'd either be starting a business from scratch or maybe starting a new employment and, and, and pulling your hair out realizing there's nothing in place. However, if you've got existing risk assessments, there are a number of options. We can um, provide a service where we upload all of your risk assessments for you, or there's two other options. You can um, basically upload the information in the same from your existing risk assessments in the same way I've just taken you through creating a risk assessment, or you can simply Upload your existing maybe PDF or Word documents to the um, assessment, so the, the the creation process, and just create actions off the back of it as opposed to typing out the current risk assessment. Hopefully, that answers your question. Anything else? Uh, thanks, Ryan. Um, I do have one now. Um, clearly, we've got quite a mix today of uh, existing and uh, interested customers, but I've got a question from an existing one, which is: if I'm already a Workright customer. What is the process for getting set up? Okay, if you're an existing customer, it's actually very easy for us to um, to set you up with access to to, to a clean system or, or a brand new um, setup. Which is, we wouldn't have um, any existing sort of stencils in it. That would be for our customers to, to populate. So we can physically switch on the tool for any designated people within. The organisation generally is going to be one or two people that um, would need to, to pilot the system. But yeah, that's 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 very simple for us to do. So just notify the Workright support, and they can get that switched on for you. I will then follow up with the call to yourselves um, it, within a few days just to see how you're getting on and maybe talk you through a bit of guidance. However, if you're if you're not a Workright user, um, it's also very simple to to, to set up an evaluation um, account for you, so you're able to access the same tool. Um, but equally, you, d you don't actually need to have a, a, a live Workright system to be able to access it. So it's a similar process for both, but if you're an existing si uh, user, it's switching on a feature for you to have a look at. Next question. We we do, Ryan. We've uh, just had one that's just come in. Could, could you explain the overall risk status on the dashboard, please? The overall risk status. Okay, so this is effectively showing you the uh, of, of all published risk assessments. So this isn't showing anything that's not published. This is showing me um, the highest risk on any one published risk assessment. I mean, it's, this is a demo system, and um, it's showing me at the moment very high. But the reality is, if you've got 100 risk assessments and 99 of them are um, at low or medium risk level, but one of them is at a very high risk level your risk as an organization, and I don't mean to preach to people that know exactly what they're talking about, your risk as an organization, organization is that you have a very high risk assessment. So that, that dial is effectively showing that. Hopefully that answers your question. Anything else at all, Chris? Okay, yeah, they're coming in thick and fast now, actually, Ryan. So um, our risk assessors have categories, slips, trips and falls, burns, Kosh uh, and so on and so on. Uh, does the software let you categorise the risks for the sake of clarity? Oh, okay. Um, clarifying the risks. Let me just think through this process. Um, as you know, Kosh risk assessments are a little bit more complex. However, we've given the functionality in the system to be able to add as much detail as possible in each of the fields. The the, the categorization, I mean, the short answer to your question is it's, it's we, we use the HSE's 5 by 5 matrix, so you aren't able to, to, to change the status, but you are able to select the likelihood and severity. So I, I, that, that partly answers your question, um, but maybe we could contact you after the, the webinar in person and, and, and talk through a little bit more detail what your requirement is there. Anything else, Chris? Sounds like it's quite busy. Uh, I think that's now it, actually, Ryan. So that's that's brilliant, and um, thank you very much. And uh, over the next few days, we'll we'll send you out uh, an email just thanking you for your attendance, but also just to inform you of what we've what we've got coming up next. So um, thanks, Ryan, and everyone have a good weekend, and uh, hopefully see you all next month. Many thanks.